What's up guys, I'm Hootie with Level Up Gaming and today you are in search of the best possible mouse for FPS games. You know, five to 10 years ago, I would have been able to tell you probably the best or even the top five mice for FPS games. But today in 2020, reliable sensors are available across the board for all manufacturers and quality control is through the roof comparatively. The competition is heated. So let's talk about the best possible mouse for you and how you can find it. It's worth mentioning, I'm gonna show some mice today. I'm gonna talk about a few brands. I'm not sponsored by any of these brands and most of the, or actually all of these mice were purchased by me with my own money. So my opinions are only biased in the fact that uh, I prefer what I like and you don't necessarily need to prefer those as well to find a good mouse for you. Now, finding the best mouse for you is a super personal thing because everyone has different preferences and hand measurement sizes, which makes a huge difference in finding a mouse. There are at least two things, though, that you can use to objectively judge a mouse on why it might be better or worse than another mouse. So let's talk about those two things, and then we'll get into the real nitty gritty about how you decide what mouse is right for you. So first up, let's quickly talk about the mouse cable. The mouse cable is really important. I don't wanna to spend too much time on it, but you do need to spend some time looking at the mouse cables when you're purchasing a new mouse. When I'm looking at mice, one of the first things I'm gonna look at is whether or not the cable is paracorded. And that's mostly because I'm too lazy to paracord my own mouse cables. Now, if you know how to do that and you enjoy it or you want to do it because you found a really good mouse, Go for it, more power to you. That is a definitely a viable option, but typically I don't do that myself. So if the mouse doesn't have a paracorded cable, I'm on to the next one. That being said, any cable paired with a bungee can get rid of most issues that you would experience, but you still will have less drag and less weight holding your mouse down if you end up with a paracorded cable over one of those hard plastic cables or even some of the braided cables that are still super heavy. That all being said, if you can find a mouse that has a low latency wireless sensor, doesn't have any issues with it, and it meets all of your requirements, that's the best way to reduce that drag that you might experience from a cable. On to the next one. The most probably objectively important part about your mouse is the sensor. Over the years, mouse sensors have become more and more accessible to more and more companies, but you still wanna make sure that the mouse that you're purchasing has a flawless sensor inside of it. This is super important because you need to know that the mouse that you're using and the sensor it has inside of it is going to accurately track every movement that you make. So what is a flawless mouse sensor? Basically, it's a mouse that doesn't interfere with what you're doing at all or as little as possible and provides us with the most raw input possible. Taking what is input from your mouse directly to the computer without processing it. Now here's a list of very commonly used mouse sensors that are currently on the market that are also flawless. I would check and make sure that the mouse that you're looking at has one of these sensors in it, or if one of the sensors that your mouse uses isn't listed on this list, go ahead and Google search that sensor you can find out very quickly whether or not it is flawless or not. So what if the sensor for a mouse isn't flawless? Well, I'll tell you what, I'm passing on it. I'm not even considering it. 10 years ago, whatever, I may have thought about it, depending on all the other things that mouse had going on for it. Um, but even then, I probably was gonna pass on it. So the mouse sensor is super important. If it's not accurately tracking what you're doing or it's making any sort of modifications, mm, you probably shouldn't be using it. So next up, we can talk about the shape, the weight, the dimensions of the potential mouse that you're looking at or the mouse that I would be purchasing. And this is where things get a little bit more tricky. There are generally two mouse shapes to take into consideration when you're looking at a mouse, ergonomic or ergo and ambidextrous. An ergonomic mouse is typically a mouse that is designed to fit right-handed mouse users or left-handed mouse users, but not the other. It is a one-handed mouse. If you wanted, if it was a right-handed mouse and you wanted to use it left-handed, it's not designed for that purpose, so it would not be comfortable. Whereas an ambidextrous mouse, quite obviously, is a mouse that is going to support left-handed and right-handed users. So a lot of the times, they'll have buttons on both the left hand 
and the right hand side. And it's got a very general shape to it, like the G Pro Wireless that will support someone, whether they're left-handed or right-handed. And now the shape of a mouse is one of those things that is completely personal preference. I very rarely find myself using and enjoying an Ergo mouse. It doesn't fit my hand the way I like, and it doesn't really work for me. So you'll see most of the mice that I use and even try to use are ambidextrous mice, and that's because I know that's what's gonna work best for my hand. Then you've got the weight of the mouse that you're looking at. So this one is a really funny one because I remember a time, it seems like a long time ago, but I don't think it was really that long ago now where a lot of mice were shipping with extra weights so that you could make them heavier. And actually this is coming back a little bit right now with uh, the idea of shifting the center of gravity on your mouse. But that's besides the point. They were shipping with weights to make them heavier because it provided you with a little bit more control or maybe that was the idea of it. But now we've kind of realized and manufacturers have realized and it started happening. Mice are becoming lighter and lighter and lighter. I mean, we're talking the difference of like five to 10 grams on average every year for the past couple of years. And we've got mice now that weigh like 50 or even down in the 40s in grams. Now this is important because the lighter a mouse gets, the easier it is to control, uh, the easier it is to, you know, move that mouse exactly where you wanna move it as fast and accurately as possible. But I don't want you to get too caught up over the difference of five or even 10 grams because it's very, very, hard to notice that difference. And I think this is very obvious when you take a look at the pro scene of most FPS games out there right now, the pros are almost all using Logitech G Pro wireless mice. This mouse is a fantastic mouse, in my opinion. It gets the job done. It just does everything really, really well. This mouse weighs about 80 grams, a little bit less if you take the bottom plate out of it. But there are plenty of mice on the market now that weigh between 40, 50, and 60 grams that are really, really solid mice. But why aren't the majority of pros switching to those mice if weight is so important? Weight is important, but some of the other factors definitely do outweigh, <laughs> outweigh whether or not a mouse is 80 grams or 70 grams or 80 grams or 60 grams in some cases. So. Take those into account, take a look at the sensor, take a look at the grip and how it fits your hand, all of those things before you decide that you need to buy a certain mouse because it weighs 54 grams. So you probably do have a preferred mouse shape whether you realize it or not. Take a look at the mouse that you're using and whether or not you find it extremely comfortable or whether or not you're just tolerating it because that's what you have. And if you don't have a preference, then I would recommend personally starting off with an ambidextrous mouse and getting used to that shape and kind of understanding the flexibility that it offers you. If that still doesn't work for you though, you could always end up switching over to an Ergo mouse. And you also understand why weight matters when you're choosing a mouse, because we just talked about that. But you're probably wondering still, how do you find the right sized mouse for your hand? Because as you've probably seen, or you already know, there are a lot of mice out there. So how do you know which one is good for your hand? Generally speaking, I have found that Rocket Jump Ninja's way of measuring mouse sizes to be the most reliable in deciding what mouse is best for you. And it's actually worked really well in my case. So this, this way of measuring a mouse is you take the measurement of three fingers, your three middle fingers here, wide. And that's about how wide the center base of your mouse should be. So if you take a look at my G Pro Wireless, and I put my three fingers over the top here, you will see, if I can get this right, that it is about as wide as those three fingers combined on top. And then what you need to do is take the measurement of your, pardon me, I don't wanna give you the finger, of your middle finger, and the mouse should be about as long as your middle finger from knuckle to tip. As you can see, from knuckle to tip, the G Pro Wireless is about as long as my middle finger. And now obviously, depending on what grip you use, this could be adjusted to be either bigger or smaller, depending on what suits you. But I've found that this is a generally good way of figuring out which size mouse will fit your hand the best. So let's talk about those grips and whether you should look bigger or smaller. There are three main types of grips with a few variations in between there, and you'll know if you are one of those variations generally. 
So the first grip is the claw grip. And the claw grip is, is exactly what it sounds like. So you're grabbing the mouse in a claw-like fashion. You're not using your fingertips. You're not using your palm. You are grabbing the mouse in a claw-like fashion. So you are holding it generally like this. And if you're using claw grip, you generally can get away with a little bit of a smaller length in mouse and width. And then you've got your fingertip grip. So fingertip grip is arguably one of one of the most used grips out there. And this one is interesting as well, because again, you're not using your palm, but you're you are using your fingertips. So you're kind of you're holding the mouse more like this, but it's not all the way back in your palm per se. It doesn't necessarily touch your palm. There are variations of this where it does touch your palm. Those are also extremely viable as well. But with fingertip grip, you want to be able to rest your fingers on here in less of a claw like fashion and more of a like just relaxed fashion, straightforward and <clears throat> be able to click your mouse and obviously have enough room for your hand in general uh, to actually grab that mouse. So you can still go a little bit smaller on your mouse with this one as well, both in length and width. And lastly, the last major grip type is going to be your palm grip. Palm grip is right quite literally what it sounds like. You are palming the mouse. It is in your hand like this. And now people that are using palm grip typically like a mouse to be a little bit bigger. So for instance, my Zowie FK1 here, it's a pretty big mouse. It was the mouse that I primarily used when I was palm gripping before I realized that it was so good for palm grippers, but it's pretty large. And it's perfect because even though I have fairly large hands, it fits perfectly in my hand and rests perfectly in my palm. Because it's so large and it flares out a little bit at the base at the bottom, it's got a perfect place for me to rest my, my palm on and not feel like, I don't know, feel like it's too small or crampy. Whereas with my Final Mouse Ultralight here, it is, it's, a, it's a small mouse. It's hard to tell maybe, but it is a very small mouse. Uh, it's a very light mouse, but it's very small. And if I palm grip this thing, my fingers stick out over the edge and I, I've just got my mouse, my hand kind of engulfs this mouse and it becomes very uncomfortable. And the funny thing is the mice that I've always been the best with generally fall in line with those rules of the mouse needs to be about as wide as on the middle base as your three fingers are wide. It needs to be about as long as your middle finger from knuckle to tip. And the mice that I've been the worst with don't fall in line with that. So it's something to take into consideration. And now, as you can probably guess, my mouse of choice is the Logitech G Pro Wireless for a multitude of reasons. The sensor in this thing is amazing. The shape of it is perfect. The size fits my dimensions almost exactly. And I didn't even know that the first time I bought one. That all being said, I'm always on the lookout for new and better mice out there on the market. But no matter what I do, I always find myself coming back to this thing. This isn't the only one I own. I actually own two of them now. Um, and you know, it's just an all around solid mouse. I really hope this video helps you make an informed purchase and find that perfect mouse for you so that you can perform at your highest level. Don't forget to subscribe and let me know in the comments down below. What's your preferred mouse grip type?